I'm so happy that you met all my expectations. Thank you. Hello everyone, how are you? Hope you're doing really well. Welcome to another weekly reading vlog, which I haven't done in quite a while, just because life's been so manic, I haven't really had the time, but this week I actually have time to read. So I'm gonna quickly show you the two books I'm hoping to read this week. They're graphic novels. We have a bit of a themed thing going on this week. I cannot wait to read these. Obviously the first one is on a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. All I know about this is that it's a queer love story set in a boarding school in space. My expectations for this are very high. I can't wait to read this and tell you my thoughts. It is pretty thick, but it's also very kind of highly illustrated and there are some pages with no text whatsoever. So I'm kind of thinking that it won't take me too long. It looks like it's about 530 pages. So I'm definitely gonna dig into this today. And then the other one I'm going to read is Becoming Unbecoming by Una. This was on my May TBR uh, and I didn't get to it. So this is a graphic novel. Uh, it's a personal account of the author enduring sexual violence uh, as she was growing up in the 70s. And it tackles a lot of things such as sexual assault and victim blaming. And uh, it sounds like it's going to be really thought provoking and probably quite devastating. Um, but the format is so interesting. I really just can't predict what this is going to be like. I just thought I hadn't pressed record, but I have. So it's all fine. Everything's fine. So I'm going to start this right now. I'm going to have some lunch. I'm going to read this guy and I will give you an update when I'm a sizable chunk of the way through and I have some thoughts. Hi, I'm in my comfies now. I made it to the end of the day. I did my nails, which I pretty much ruined straight away. But anyway, I have updates, mostly on, on a sunbeam. I absolutely smashed through 258 pages. I'm not really sure how, that's not something I do. But um, anyway, <laughs> so we're basically following our main character, Mia, in two different timelines. The first timeline is her time in her boarding school. She meets a girl, she's falling in love, and then the second timeline, which is five years later, is where she's working with a group of women slash non-binary people um, to rebuild and reconstruct abandoned, crumbling structures to make them something new and something beautiful. And it's so cool. I think Tilly Walden is not only an incredibly gifted illustrator, but she's a really skilled storyteller. The story is flowing beautifully, the pacing is great. I really care about the characters. I feel like I know them really well. Um, there's such subtle characteristics that she includes in like the way they speak and the way that they move their faces and their habits. And it's just honestly kind of masterful. I literally don't know how I've never heard of Tilly Walden before. I found this online and I had never heard of her. She's like this hugely respected, well-known graphic novelist. I just didn't know that. <laughs> there are some sort of sci-fi elements, but it's mostly like a very human relationship-based kind of story. Someone is trimming some trees or something. I can only apologize. I'm gonna keep reading this and I will update you soon. It is Wednesday. Uh, I didn't vlog yesterday because it was just a pretty non-stop day and I finished on a sunbeam which I'm gonna tell you about right now and obviously the fact that I gave it five stars <laughs> unsurprisingly. I'm sure you saw it coming. I didn't even tab towards the end because I was just so in it. I just literally couldn't put it down, couldn't stop thinking about it uh, and then by the end I was just an absolute wreck and there were tears streaming down my face. 
so no one needs to see that. So as expected, this is a five star book. I absolutely loved everything about it. The story goes to such an exciting and satisfying place and like it's not hugely inventive. I think the inventive aspect comes from the world and the setting and how it's illustrated um, but the story itself is just like it's just very satisfying, really really fun to read. Um, but yeah, I think most of the joy in this book comes from the characters and the relationships that they have with each other. I think I'm coming to realise how much found family books like really, really mean to me and how much I adore them. And this really is just like the epitome of a really great found family dynamic. And I had a great time. I'm so happy that you met all my expectations. Thank you. Honestly, it hasn't been like a fantastic reading year so far. So finding a new favourite feels great. <laughs> so absolutely thrilled I read this. Definitely, definitely recommend it. 100% up there with like Heartstopper. It's just one of the best graphic novels I've read. Um, not only amazingly illustrated, but incredibly told story and perfect characters. Like perfect, wouldn't change a thing. So that feels really great. And that means that we're moving on to slightly darker times with the coming unbecoming. I think I'm ready for this. I think uh, I think this, that it's time. I think actually, honestly, this is gonna take a lot longer to read than I'm expecting because some pages actually have like a lot to take in. There's like a lot of content on each page. So maybe this will actually take me quite a long time, but we'll see. I'm excited to dig into it. And I will of course tell you what I think. So see you later. So this is pretty heavy. Um, so I'm going to put all the trigger warnings in the description for anyone who needs it. This is almost like a polar opposite experience to reading on a sunbeam. It's like completely different in terms of tone and art style. We're basically following Una who is growing up in the 70s and she has dealt with some sexual trauma uh, that she's kind of buried and not dealt with. And we're also really focusing on the fact that the Yorkshire Ripper was um, murdering women in the 70s at this point when Una is growing up. She's kind of surrounded by it, it's on the news constantly. And the fear was like truly instilled into women and girls living in that county at that time uh, to a really horrifying extent. So we're really seeing Una deal with not only her sexual trauma, um, but the trauma of just like constantly feeling frightened and threatened uh, and knowing that the police just aren't really looking out for you in a very meaningful way. We're really seeing the failure of the Yorkshire police at this time and how they routinely and habitually uh, just don't take women seriously, sex workers are shamed and blamed, and the much younger victims, there was like a much, much younger victim who was just completely ignored and not taken seriously because for whatever reason, her experience just wasn't valid because she was so young. It's absolutely, <laughs> like there are no words for it. Everything about this is horrifying, to be completely honest, um, but I think it's, really affecting and it's really really well done and I feel like a lot of these spreads are gonna really really stick in my mind so I mean I'm only 70 pages in but I think this is looking like it's probably gonna be another five star so I am loving it but I am now gonna take a break to watch Strange Things because ugh, this stuff is heavy and I think you need to give yourself breaks as much as you need to so I'll continue reading tomorrow I'll finish it in the next few days and I will speak to you tomorrow. The way this author describes carrying trauma and like how relentless it is, is just like unbelievable. I'm gonna read a really quick excerpt. You're a survivor, they tell me. I understand it's meant kindly to be empowering, but surviving, what a waste of my valuable time surviving has been. Hours, days, years, decades, so much time struggling. Precious energy spent managing the damage so that I can live my life. In a different landscape, I might have put that time and energy to better use.
So I just finished Becoming Unbecoming by Una and I have a few thoughts. I think I'm gonna give this four stars. Really, really great graphic novel super effective very haunting we do go into a lot of like data and statistics um and information about sexual assault and that kind of thing which is really informative and i learned a lot but there's a lot in there it's like very dense with statistics so i feel like there's only so much that your brain can take in especially when the subject matter is like so depressing it's just like quite difficult to read and difficult to get through. I think I was just surprised at the ending and how we kind of skipped from her leaving school and leaving her life behind when she's 16 because she is so miserable, uh, which is fair enough, you know, good for you. And then she's just like, yeah, you know, got married, had a kid, had a pretty good life, you know, not all good, pretty sad at the same time, but that's it. And it's just like, what? <laughs> what? That's it, that's the end. So we really don't get to see any sort of processing or healing on the author's part, which again is absolutely fine. She doesn't owe us that, but it does mean that this isn't the most hopeful book. It's very, very sad. Uh, it's pretty devastating all the way through, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so it's rough, it's a rough one. So it, I mean, it's a really good graphic novel. I'm gonna give it four stars. I've really enjoyed it. I definitely recommend it. After reading the content warnings and uh, knowing what you're going to go into, obviously look after yourself. Bearing that in mind, I recommend it. And I can't believe I've read my TBR for this week. It's only Thursday. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to read Heartstopper Volume 2. I don't own it, but I do believe that Alice Aisman has published them online for free. So I think I just read it. So I'm going to absolutely be doing that. I'm very excited. So the graphic novels continue, my friends. They continue. I'm not done. Uh, but I am done for today because I'm going to watch Stranger Things and I'm going to try and find something to eat in this house. Um, <laughs> we'll update you more soon. Happy Saturday. Uh, I did not vlog at all yesterday because it was just one of those classic didn't stop all day days. Um, but I'm just here to wrap up this vlog uh, and say goodbye. I have read a really good chunk of Heartstopper Volume 2. Obviously, predictably, it's wonderful. It's... <sighs> I mean, everyone knows at this point how delightful Heartstopper is, so it's not a new thought. It's not a new idea, but... Oh my gosh, it just brings so much joy. Um, I actually stopped watching this series when I realised I hadn't read that material yet because I really want to read the graphic novels first because I just enjoy doing it that way. So that's what I'm doing. Can't wait to finish this volume and then I can watch the rest of Heartstopper. Excellent. So I'm not going to finish that in this vlog, but just predict that it will be five stars. I'll be very surprised if it isn't because uh, it's perfect. So again, I know that's not an original thought, but here we are. So I'm going to end this vlog here and I'm going to thank you so much for spending time with me today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and it's just been absolutely lovely to share all my thoughts with you on these beautiful books. Honestly, what a great week for me. A four star, a five star and another upcoming five star. That uh, hasn't really happened much this year. <laughs> so I am very happy. Thanks again for watching. Leave me a comment if you like and if you have time because I love chatting to you all uh, and I will see you in my next one. Farewell. Thank you.